Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, who today was officially declared Time Magazine's Person of the Year. <laughs> and you might be happy, but I'll tell you now, Vladimir Putin is going to be so mad. <laughs> the next time he's in the waiting room at the dentist, yeah, he's just going to be like, now to read the magazine. <laughs> Congrats to Vladimir Zelensky and the Ukrainian people, and congrats to Time Magazine on its annual reminder that Time Magazine still exists. In more international news, German authorities this morning arrested 25 of QAnon, QAnon followers, 25 members, for plotting to storm parliament and overthrow the government. Which, yes, is disconcerting news, but once again, proof of how inspiring American culture is all around the world. <laughs> yeah. Even in Germany, they were like, we should also storm the capital, and we should also overthrow the government, and then we're going to hang Mike Pence! Mike Pence! <laughs> oh, in technology news, Apple Music has just announced a brand new karaoke mode that will allow you to turn down the vocals on songs so that you can sing them instead. Yeah. <laughs> and I love this. This is great news for anyone who is thinking, I love this Adele song, but what if it was sung by someone who sucks? <laughs> I think it'll be a lot of fun, you know? And now Spotify is also adding this feature to its podcast so you can shout your own COVID theories over Joe Rogan. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. Oh, in some legal news, an Illinois wom woman is suing the makers of TGI Friday's mozzarella sticks. <laughs> Get this, because she discovered that they contain cheddar cheese, but no mozzarella. <laughs> That's why she's suing. And if you ask me, I'm, I'm impressed that these cheese sticks have cheese in them at all. <laughs> yeah, I feel like most American cheese products, if you look at the fine print, it's like, technically, this is sawdust and corn syrup, <laughs> but we were thinking about cheese when we were mixing it. <laughs> all right, let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day, starting with Georgia, the state <laughs> sitting on Florida <laughs> until the police can arrive. <laughs> because after a year of campaigning, an election in November, and then another runoff election yesterday, the Senate race in Georgia is finally, mercifully, over. In Georgia's closely watched Senate runoff, Democrat Raphael Warnock walking away with the win. In the nation's final contest of the midterms, the incumbent narrowly defeating his Republican challenger, Herschel Walker, and cementing the Democrats' majority in the Senate, now a 51-49 advantage. Walker was handpicked by former President Trump and is at least the fifth Trump-backed Senate candidate to be defeated. Warnock's win gives the party an extra seat to help advance their agenda. It is my honor to utter the four most powerful words ever spoken in a democracy. The people have spoken. Okay. Okay. Congratulations to Raphael Warnock. I mean, I thought the four most powerful words in American democracy were, here is your sticker, but sure, I guess <laughs> the people have spoken works too. But yes. Democrats have now won 51 seats in the Senate, and you realize what that means? Yeah. Basically nothing. <laughs> um, no, because they lost the House. But still, 51 is bigger than 50, so it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> and you couldn't have had a race between two more different candidates when you think about it. Like, when you take a moment, when you step away from the race, you understand how crazy this was? You had Raphael Warnock, a pastor, a pastor who was preaching at the same church as MLK, and Herschel Walker, a man who thinks MLK is how you spell milk. <laughs> but despite that, it was close. It was really, really close. In fact, if I was Raphael Warnock, my victory speech wouldn't have been me smiling, and I, I would have been a lot more different. He's a gracious man. He was talking about democracy and America's promise. I would have been up there like, are you people kidding me with this shit? <laughs> you guys are giving me a two-point win over this walking vasectomy commercial? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but he's a better man. <laughs> so that's that. Senator Warnock returns to Washington, and Herschel Walker goes home in defeat. But don't feel bad for Herschel, guys. He actually took the news quite well. Yeah, his people were like, don't get this, uh, don't let this get you down, Herschel. And he was like, let what get me down? 
like the, the Senate race. He's like, you think I should run for the Senate? Yeah, okay. <laughs> what is it? But let's move on to some major news about coronavirus. For most Americans, COVID has become something you just try to ignore while you live your life, like mosquitoes or jury duty. <laughs> Meanwhile, in China, they've been treating COVID like an existential danger, all right, to every man, woman, and child. But believe it or not, after weeks of historic protests from the Chinese people, that is all about to change. China's government has made a radical shift this morning, officially moving away from its strict zero COVID policies. Now, this move appears to be in response to widespread protests in recent weeks, including some of the boldest demonstrations this country has seen in decades. China's National Health Commission held a press conference to announce that mandatory COVID testing for most people will end immediately. They'll no longer have to show a negative test result in public places. And those armies of health workers in hazmat suits will stop locking down apartment complexes. Also, people with COVID won't be forced into state quarantine. They'll be able to recover at home. All that and a commitment to vaccinating the elderly sounds like common sense, but it's a huge climb down for Xi Jinping and the Communist Party, who watched protests erupt in over 20 cities with calls for freedom, not lockdowns. I'm happy for the people of China. I genuinely am. Because I don't know if you were following this, but these restrictions were truly wild. I mean, they wouldn't even let you quarantine at home. You had to spend it at a government quarantine facility that looks like a terminal at LaGuardia. And <laughs> that's really messed up. Because the one silver lining of getting COVID is having an excuse to get out of plans, you know? But China was like, no, 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 no. You've got COVID and you've got plans with 600 strangers. That's what you got. <laughs> and you know, after hearing this story, I would love to see an American citizen and a Chinese citizen sit down to talk about COVID. Because you always hear Americans talking about how they feel as though they were oppressed by the COVID restrictions here. Yeah, the Chinese person would be like, it was brutal. I was literally boarded up in my home, beaten up by the police and sent to a quarantine camp. Be like, I feel you, brother. This one summer, I got asked to leave an Applebee's. We are not different at all, my friend. We both suffer. <laughs> but let's move on to some news from the world of air travel. If you fly a lot, then you know how boarding a plane goes, right? You get to your gates. Try to sneak in line with the boarding group ahead of yours. <laughs> you put your luggage into the overhead bin sideways so no one else can use it. And then you sit down and you put your phone into airplane mode. And it has to be in airplane mode because if anyone calls you while you're on a plane, the plane immediately crashes into an elementary school. <laughs> That's how it works. It's science. All right, we know this. Well, it turns out in Europe, all of that is about to change. Could this be the potential end of putting your phone on airplane mode, maybe when you take a flight? Starting in June, airplane mode won't be mandatory on flights in the European Union. The European Commission recently ruled that airlines can provide 5G technology on board the plane, which allows passengers to send and receive calls and text messages. Yes, finally, passengers in Europe can make phone calls while on a plane, because every time I've been on a plane, I've always thought, man, I wish everyone was having a different loud conversation right now. <laughs> that baby can't be the only one who's allowed to make noise. Come on, man. <laughs> I know some people like this. I think it sucks. I feel like as a society, we're quickly running out of places that give you an excuse not to take a call. You know, you used to be able to say, sorry, I wasn't home. I missed your call. And then the cell phone killed that. Yeah. Then you had to pretend you were going into a tunnel. Oh, yes, Uncle Jeannie, I would love to hear the story, but I'm going to a tunnel. Bye! <laughs> yeah, then the tunnels got reception. Then subways got reception. Now the planes have reception? <laughs> Pretty soon, the only excuse you'll have for not being able to get a call is, is that you're on T-Mobile. Like, I wish I could, but I... <laughs> But, but I mean, I guess if you, if you really need to make a call on a plane, it's not the worst thing in the world to have an option. But I just hope the pilots don't have access to this feature. <laughs> Folks, we're about to a major storm system. Please uh, turn to your seats and uh, buckle up. I'll let you know when we've gotten through it. It could be quite bumpy and dangerous. All right, Greg, this is gonna take all of your concentration and skills as a pilot, but you could do this. Just focus, just focus. <laughs> oh shit, it's Wendy! 
It's Wendy. Hey, girl, what's going on? No, I'm not doing anything. You know me. I'm just living my life on the road. All right, that's it for today's headlines. Let's move on to something that everyone loves. It's time to check in on today's lotto numbers with Dulce Sloan, everybody! <laughs> what is going on, Dulce <laughs> Sloan? So good to see you, friend. Hello! Yes, Dulce, what are today's winning lotto numbers? Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Trevor, now I hear what you're saying. Nobody wants people on a plane on the phone. But have you ever overheard a good argument. Yeah. I'm talking about tea. <laughs> Hot. Poured fresh from an exit row. Come on. Picture this. You're on an international flight. The movies are trash. You're already eight. There's nothing to do. And then suddenly, you hear Stacy in the middle seat call her husband and tell him she's pregnant because she took a pregnancy test in the terminal bathroom. <laughs> and then he says, pregnant? How? We haven't had sex in six months. What? <laughs> Can you even get a pregnancy test at a Hudson News in the airport? Did she bring it from home? Whose baby is this? So now, we got something to do. <laughs> now, all of us in row 18 need to decide if he is going to divorce her, right? But you're all the way in row 23, and the good shit is in row 18. So now the flight attendant has to get on the PA and go, listen, Stacy is pregnant. We don't know if it's her husband's or somebody else. <laughs> but there's more information to come. Also, we're at 30,000 feet, blah, 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 right? <laughs> so now, everybody on the plane got to go, mm, is this a miracle or a sin? <laughs> right? Is Stacy a hero or is she Jezebel Harlot Incorporated? Either way, this is my in-flight movie now. <laughs> and this is people coming together as a people, okay? Because <laughs> what do people love to do? Be in other people's business! <laughs> and that is why I think that we should have phone calls on airplanes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, wait, 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 go, go back, go back. Yeah, but so what happened with the baby? I don't know! See, that's what I'm saying. I wasn't going to Scotland, but now I have to follow this lady to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> I was on my way to Dubai, and I gotta go to cold-ass Scotland and see what this heifer is up to. Okay, well, I can't wait to find out, Dulce, but we're running out of time. Can we get to the uh, lotto numbers, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, by the way, now you know, She's an Atlanta girl. She's a George Peach. <laughs> <laughs> and Atlanta was going wild last night over the Warnock victory, okay? It was so turned up, my friend's son was late to school this morning, and he's 10. <laughs> now, Trevor, this was the real battle of Southern politics, okay? A pastor and a football player? <laughs> the god of football and the god of God? And I'm glad Herschel didn't win, okay? We are all very happy <laughs> that that block-headed man did not win. <laughs> but the problem is, now that he's not running, we don't know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> During the election, I felt safe. He was on camera all the time. <laughs> okay, but now he's incognito and free. <laughs> Listen, this man is a menace. He's gonna be running around impersonating FBI agents, okay? <laughs> Getting everybody and their mama pregnant. This is a public safety emergency. What? And when I say everybody and their mama, I'm worried because my mama lives in Georgia. <laughs> we gotta find this man, okay? Listen, now I know a couple places he won't be. A library. <laughs> uh, the condom section of a CBS family court. We know her. He's not going to be. And listen, America, for just 65 cents a day, <laughs> you can help me find Herschel Walker. Okay, well, well do say, do say, uh, people will have the money to help you if we can help them with the lotto numbers. Can we, can we just get the winning lotto numbers, please? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, so today's winner is Herschel Walker. <laughs> 
Walker, you just need to come down to the studio and claim your prize. And please, do not pay attention to the giant cage above your head. 